So remember back in the day when we were solving quadratic equalities and say we had x squared minus 2x minus 12 equals 3? Remember how we set it equal to 0 so that we could factor it and then set each of the factors equal to 0? Remember that only worked when two things multiplied together equaled 0? Well, we're going to be talking about that in this lesson, except we're going to be dealing with inequalities. But the rules pretty much are the same. First, you're going to set it equal to 0, and then you're going to factor it. And then we'll talk about what you do from there. So let me start with how I got this. Um, I started with x squared minus 2x minus 12 equals 3. And the first thing I wanted to do was set it equal to 0, so I could set each factor equal to 0. So I just subtracted 3 from both sides to scoot this 3 over on the left. So I was left with x squared minus 2x minus 15 equals 0. And then I factored this. And so obviously the first has to be an x and an x. And then I always do the last. And to make a 15, I might use a 5 and a 3. And let's see, my outer was 3x and my inner is 5x. I wanted a negative 2x, so I need a negative 5x plus a 3x for my middle term. And so the plus goes with this one and the negative goes with this one. And so now I just set each of those factors equal to 0. And I solve, so I get x equals 5 or x equals negative 3. Great. Okay, so now let's go into today's lesson. Let's say that I have something, let's start with something that's already factored. Now this is not a quadratic, this is actually a cubic. And so I'm going to start with that. Okay, now I need to know when this is less than 0. The problem is I can't just set each of them as less than zero in this one because remember, there's a whole bunch of ways to get less than zero. I could have negative, positive, positive. I could have positive, negative, positive. I could have positive, positive, negative. And there's even more combinations that I could have where I multiply these things and get a negative answer. And so the trick to these is to put this on a number line. Put the zeros on a number line. What do I mean by the zeros? Well, where does each factor equal zero? So x minus 3 equals zero when x equals 3. So that's the first thing I'm going to stick on the number line. So let's put a 3 on the number line. Then I have the x plus 1. When does that equal zero? When x equals negative 1. So I'm going to stick that on the number line. And then I have x minus 6 equals 0, and so x equals 6, I'm also going to stick on my number line. Okay, so now I have to see where I have positive and negative regions. In order to do that, I want to choose a number in this region, another number in this region. Okay, so each of the regions, I need to choose a number and test it out, see if it's a positive or a negative, and then I'm going to have my solution. Bear me with me for a moment. Okay, so let me just start here. A number in this region would be anything bigger than 6. So you could choose any number bigger than 6. I'm going to choose 7 because 7 is 1 bigger than 6. So let x equal 7. All right, and then think about your signs. So I would get 7 minus 3. 7 minus 3 is a positive number, and all I care about is signs because I'm trying to make a sign chart here. So all I care about is the signs. I don't care about the numbers. So if I put in a 7, I'm going to get a positive times a positive times 7 minus 6 is still a positive. So a positive times a positive times a positive is a positive. So that's going to be a positive. Now I'm going to look at my pink region. Okay, let's choose a number in this region. Well, maybe 4. 4 is in this region. You could have chosen 5, too. So I'm just going to choose 4. So now, 4 minus 3 is a positive number. 4 plus 1 is a positive number. But 4 minus 6 is a negative number. 
So a positive times a positive times a negative is a negative. So this region is negative. Let's go to the blue region. Let's choose a number in this region. Well, zero is in this region, and I love choosing zero when I can, because it's easy. All right, so zero minus three is negative number. Zero plus one is a positive number. Zero minus six is a negative number. So I have a negative times a positive times a negative, which is a positive number. Now let's go to the gray region. Okay, let's choose a negative number that's less than negative one. So let's choose negative two. So negative two minus three is a negative number. Negative two plus one is a negative number. Negative two minus six is a negative number. A negative times a negative is a positive, times a negative is a negative. So you'll notice in this sign chart, it went negative, positive, negative, positive. Don't get in the habit of thinking that it always switches, because while it does a lot of the times, it doesn't always. And so you want to check each of the regions individually like I did. So now let's answer our question. When is this less than zero? I just look for the negative regions, and so that happens when it's less than negative one. So you can say when x is less than negative one, and it also happens when x is between three and six, and x is between three and six. Another way to write this is to say from negative infinity to negative one and between three and six. Okay, so both of those are the same thing, and that is my solution. I'm just looking for the negative regions because I'm saying when is it less than zero. Let me do another problem. x squared plus x is greater than six. Remember, the first thing is I always want a zero over on this side. So let's subtract six from both sides x squared plus x minus six is greater than zero. Now let's factor this. So x and x, a three and a two maybe. I want a positive x, so a plus and a minus. Yeah, that makes a negative six, that works. Okay, so now, again, I put my zeros on my number line. So my zeros are when x plus three equals zero, that means x equals negative three. Stick it on the number line and then x minus two equals zero, so that's x equals two. Stick it on the number line. Okay, so now I have only three regions in this problem. Let's do the gray region first. So choose a number that's less than negative three. How about negative four? Now look at your factored equation. So a negative four plus a three is negative number. Negative four minus two is also a negative number. So a negative times a negative is a positive. Let's look at the blue region. All right, choose a number between negative three and two. Oh look, zero is between there. I love zero when I can use it because it's the easiest. Uh, zero plus three is three, a positive number. And then zero minus two is negative two, a negative number. And a positive times a negative is a negative. Okay, now let's go to the purple region. So choose a number that's bigger than two, how about three? So three plus three is a positive number. Three minus two is a positive number also. A positive times a positive is a positive. Okay, so I've made my sign chart. Again, this switches signs everywhere, but don't get into the habit of thinking that always happens. So I get plus minus plus. In this example, I'm looking for where it's greater than zero. In other words, where it's positive on the number line, and that happens when x is less than negative three and x is greater than two. Another way to write this is from negative infinity to negative three and from two to infinity. Both ways mean the same thing. And that's a little introduction to polynomial inequalities. I hope it helped.